Q-Man. Yo, what's going on? Where are you hiding? Just hiding here, checking out your new uh, skid plate pipe protector Emperor Super Duty Guard thing that's going on here. Yeah, Emperor Racing out of Chilliwack. Racing. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. It's a really sweet looking, sweet looking sort of combination skid plate, pipe guard, engine guard a little bit. You know, I think the details are awesome. I, I like the, uh, the removable, replaceable um, plastic skid plate, you know, with the aluminum frame and all the TIG welding is perfect. Like just awesome TIG welding. All the bends are nice. You know, the, the holes that they drilled and the slots, you know, they really thought the design through making it look, you know, functional and cool looking. It's like one of those helmets you wear when you're, what's that with the horses? In the jousting. Middle? Jousting. Maybe I'm going to go dirt bike jousting. Huh? That'd be fun. already Ooh, it's getting hot now that the sun's coming out freezing conditions last night first parts have arrived for the bike build so first on the agenda is we're installing the Emperor racing skid plate in combination with pipe guard all one piece pipe guard skid plate so we'll walk you guys through a little bit of the installation and then we'll get to testing the results you can see it's just above the actual frame under the engine there. So it's high enough that when you get over a log, you know, that's a good amount of ground clearance right there. Right there, there, there. But I definitely want the guard on because I want to get into some harder riding. So I'm giving more confidence and not wrecking the pipe and wrecking the bike. That's it. First crash, not on film. I have the guard unboxed. Let's check it out. So this is a skid plate pipe guard combination guys. The actual pipe guard is attached to the skid plate with bracing, which then you're going to attach to the frame. So even though you put all your weight into the pipe, all the weight is going to be displaced to the, the rest of the skid plate into the frame. So this should not actually touch the pipe. It doesn't go on the pipe. It's gonna hover just next to it. So let's open her up and take a look. This product is from Emperor Racing, which is actually out of Canada. Scorpion for their logo. So on the bottom, right now it's all metal, but they also sell a Delrin skid plate or some type of hard plastic that bolts on to the bottom. This thing is beefy, it is strong. Let's take a look at those welds. It's nice, looks very well done, very strong for sure. I definitely think it's going to protect. I don't see any issues with protection. This thing is massive. First step is actually go watch the installation video so we don't have to do it the hard way and figure it out. Right there it says pipe guard skid plate. Search YouTube. Okay, there's the YouTube address. It comes with some, some foam adhesive to go between the skid plate and the frame. And it comes with some filler foam, which essentially keeps the mud out. Because you know, obviously you could have a little bit of mud packing in here. Um, especially when the mud is like not water mud, it's really thick. And so you want to keep, uh, you want to fill the space between the frame. It's going to extend to the linkage. So. So I just removed the actual front bracket. And this is the most important part to, to install straight. And they say use like a straight edge or a level, whatever you can to line it up with the frame. 
and it's going to go right up there. And we want to use a straight edge to make the bottom level with the bottom of the frame. That's what I gather. You can access the bolts right there to tighten up the frame. Heavy duty bolts. Level with the frame. So I'm just using this two by two and then I'm gonna hold it and have uh, Q-Man bolt it up. Yeah. That's how it works guys. So this is the front bracket, the most important setup. And it just fits right behind this engine mount bracket. And luckily, below that bolt in there as well, as you can see, just plenty of room. Now the frame does tilt back and forth a little bit, so I'm just using this front flat section. I hope that is going to be the best way to do it. We'll find out later. And then once that's in, I can always remove the skid blade quickly and just leave that bracket there. That looks good, looks good. Let's get a photo. So I got it mounted up, loose. I checked to make sure it's straight across. It looks to be pretty straight with a, with a, a, a T. And as you can see, it is level with the bottom of the frame within reason. Yeah, there you go. All done. Ready to go riding. <laughs> up. Woo! That's a gnarly little last hill. I'm now going to pull in the bolts out one at a time to throw Loctite on. So I would recommend just doing this initially. The stuff won't dry in the time that you're mocking it up. Make sure you get that right torque. Yeah, get that torque. That enough torque so it doesn't move. Should not move. It's not going anywhere. That's the torque rating, guys. Not going anywhere. There <laughs> just you go. Don't smack with a broken thumb, though. That hurts. Ow. That's the torque. <laughs> Q man in the background. Accommodation. <laughs> Shit. One handed mechanic. And then I'm gonna just curve the back end and mock it up. There's Q man. So, Q man's filming. Let's just mocking this up, guys. So, again, it's got a back little bracket that hooks over the back frame. And then we're gonna put a bracket in there, a couple pads. And so I have a little, it comes with an adhesive foam that you put run down the frame. And so, essentially, this is gonna go there. And. I line the bolt holes up essentially just like that, and we're gonna have a foam going through it to prevent any vibration. And it looks pretty cool. It looks like one of those freaking looks warrior good. guys. Looks huh? awesome. It's like one of those helmets you wear when you're what's that with the horses and the jousting. Boat? Jousting. Maybe I'm gonna go dirt bike jousting, huh? That'd be fun. Yeah. Okay, update time, guys. Q man's on the ground here, help me out. We got foam that he supplied from Emperor Racing, and just adhesive it. A vibration foam, maybe? Yeah, anti-vibration. If there was a little bit, it'll prevent it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so we just ran it along the, the frame. You can see. Let me get a picture of that. Is there a UMHW that goes on this as well, or is it just the aluminum? Oh, be well, before we permanently mount it, we're going to put the ba the bottom piece on. Yeah. yeah. And these things are replaceable, so if you wreck the linkage piece, and then you're good to go. Next one. There we go. And then, of course, the four bolts will hold it in as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, perfect. Oh, wow, that slides nice, huh? Look how slippery that is. Like it's slipping your face. But, yeah, yeah, the bracket's pretty loose. Yeah, but not loose enough. But no, it's coming there. Oh, it's just this one. It's... Yeah, see? There oh, you go. That's what? good. That's good. That's it. Well, a little looser. <laughs> and then you gotta get these, these two. Oh, see? You can hold that up there. Don't let, that, don't let that fall out. Oh, yeah, it's in the big hook there. All right. Yeah. My Q-Man's holding that up. I'm going to lock tight this. There's one. I can't see shit. There's two. Okay. And screw. I this think side. I button lined up. Right here on this side. But... And then screw that one in? Yeah. No, I'm not hooked. Oh, wait. No. It's no. right there. It just doesn't want to reach. Uh, try to push up. <clears throat> we don't have enough bolts because of the foam. Yeah. I can only push down so much. I think Wait. you're going into it. Oh yeah, you're going into it now. Okay, we got yeah. one. Okay, let's do the other one. Yeah, I can't see the other one. You gotta look. I, you can't see anything yes, on this can. side. Well, I'll just turn it and hope for the best. Well, oh, wait, it's going. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, don't go too tight. Oh, yeah, and then get the front one. Well, let's loosen them up a little bit. <laughs> no, don't lose it too much because you're barely in there. This is crazy. Barely in there, dude. 
Okay, so back to this front one. Oh, I see. Oh, it's not too bad. Once that, you know, yeah, it's all because good. I had that front plate perfectly measured, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, this went on fine. pretty smooth. And the thing is, once this gets w w softened up, it'll be easy to go in the next time when you want if you want to take it off for maintenance. Right, Q Man? Sure, as long as these heads don't get all beat up. Well, I'm not talking about the plate. I'm talking about the whole. No, I'm just talking about these. As long as they don't get beat up, you'll be all right. I'm not. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. There you go. This is looking pretty sweet. I think you're getting her now. That was five minutes of 4K right there. That's like 10 gigs. <laughs> so now you just got to torque it to the tightness that they don't come off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what Q Man is talking about is we watched the how to video and he's just tighten it so they don't come out. <laughs> yeah, tighten it until it doesn't come out. Tighten it until it's tight. So the whole idea is there should be a gap. Everywhere around the pipe. Yeah, looks like it. Looks pretty good. You can always put one of those carbon fiber ones over top and then that over top of that. Oh, yeah, you could. If you want the carbon fiber look. Yeah, or just for the upper. Because this can still get crushed if yeah. I fall in a really. Unlikely, but... Way less unlikely, yeah. yeah. Looks good. I like it. It's a nice. And it's going nice. to slide right over with the linkage is nice uh, with the linkage piece yeah that's a weird piece but sure it's, it's all right well no you don't want to get hung up on the linkage on yeah, I know you don't want to get hung up you on always that. get hung up on those on logs i would have thought that the aluminum maybe would have come a little farther back if that was the case yeah but i think it's fine or even like the actual um delver and plastic could have gone a little f well then it's just gonna go down yeah i think it's okay all right my battery's going dead the skid plate pipe guard is on now this is an optional foam and it doesn't hold any water. The water just flows right through it. And so what you can do is you could put that in the middle of the frame rails to fill the gap to prevent mud buildup. So if you're gonna go in a muddy race, um, you put that in there and it's just filling the gap. So you could get a couple more different sizes. Um, they, it's all on the website for sale. We already put this on and we're going to Moab, which is rock crawling. We're not gonna deal with any mud. And so we'll give an experiment at the same time. We'll see how much stuff builds up in there. Now, the problem with the foam is if you power wash this, you're going to destroy it. And I get in there with the power washer all the time to clean shit out. So we'll see what happens. And then the next time we pull it off to inspect, we'll try the foam when we go to the mud zone. Anyways, guys, my name is Marcel Ernie. Thanks for watching my KTM and me, Q Men. Alright, peace. Just hi, here checking out your new uh, skid plate pipe protector emperor super duty guard thing that's going on here. Like, just awesome TIG welding. All the bends are nice. You know, the, the holes that they drilled and the slots, you know, they really thought the design through, making it look, you know, Functional and cool looking. It's got this little scorpion sort of thing here with a Canadian flag in the middle, which is cool. So this right. is this a Canadian company then? That's right, Chilliwack, Canada. Chilliwack, in yeah. BC, not too far from us. Yeah, no, that's uh, it's pretty cool. Like the, like I say, the it looks it looks really strong. It looks well built. You know, piece of art almost on the bike, which is super cool. Yeah, you know, totally. I'm, I'm always a fan of, of drilling out stuff. You know, whether it's for airflow or to make a part lighter or just for design, you know, whatever it is, but you know, they did a really good job. Like all the edges, you know, they could have easily left them sharp, but they've all been sanded down smooth. You know, there's nothing on here that's gonna cut you. You know, even all the holes that have been drilled oh, have yeah. actually been reamed out with a reamer afterwards so that you have no burrs, nothing is sharp. Like that's a lot of time. You know, you gotta think every one of those holes is drilled two times for sure, right? The hole and then the reamer. Or whether they got a die that builds it or not, or maybe it's CNC'd, I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, I never actually noticed that before. That is a nice detail. It's a really nice and detail. Yeah, there's nothing cutting me right no, now. There's nothing sharp, like where all the pieces come together, like it's all smoothed out and cleaned up. It's it's really nice. I mean, everything lines up perfectly. All the bolts line up really nice. You know, the brackets onto the onto the frame are like nice heavy duty of half inch thick aluminum bar, you know, all threaded. Um you know, whether they're all stainless bolts, I'm not sure, but they look like stainless bolts. Yeah, everything, and everything came together, followed the instructions. 
the video instruction. Yeah, it came together really good. I mean, the little detail with the foam in between the engine and the skid plate. Oh yeah, that's right, right here. You know, you wouldn't see that most of the time. You'd have to just put your own foam on there if you thought of it when you were doing it. But, you know, I think, you know, Emperor really put some thought and detail into this and they've got a nice product. It looks, it looks sharp. We'll test it out in Moab. That's right, guys. That's the plan. We're going to Moab here, maybe uh, starting end of week. For or six. 10 days. Yeah, well, six Five days, days of, riding. of riding. As long as we don't blow any uh, wheels or any parts, and you know, just prepping Terrorizer. Right <laughs> yeah. Doing some clutch updates on Terrorizer and new belts and going over all the details. So, guys, if you don't know who Q Man is, Quentin, he is a full circle adventures with these side by sides. Yeah, do UTV guided UTV tours. So you know all about parts breaking yes there's plenty of parts that are always breaking on these machines they're not cheap maintenance is you know is key so you just gotta stay on top of the maintenance and, and so buy good parts exactly and so you have a good people can trust your opinion when they look at something like this emperor racing stuff exactly anyways guys as you may know my name is marcel arnie pro superbike racer And Q-Man, we met through motorcycle racing. That's how we met. We both raced BMWs. That's right. So yeah, there's my BMWs over there. 2011 uh, BMW S1000RR, which is uh, nicknamed Bumblebee. Bumblebee because normally it's yellow, but this and year it was black. So Bumblebee brought us together, huh? Bumblebee brought us together. The Penske Shock <laughs> That's right. is actually what brought us together. Yeah, Q-Man messaged me. I was selling that shock somewhere and Q-Man yeah. messaged me and I went and set it up for him. And then I have the 2016 BMW S1000, which I bought this year. And this one is called Mystique. That's right. Yeah. So. And what's the RS1's name? The RS1, this is Maverick. Maverick, okay. You got Maverick, you've got Colossus. Okay. Electra. And Terrorizer. And Terrorizer. And there's one more. And there's one more. I've got the brand new 2020 Polaris Ranger Crew North Star, which is in storage. And that one is actually called Tank Life 2.0. That's right. Because it's an upgrade from last year's, my 2016 Tank Life. Which if you've probably watched any of Marcel's videos, you've seen Tank Life on the snow and tracks, which is a lot of fun. That's right, that's yeah. right. Tank Life. Go check out the YouTube channel, guys, and search for Tank Life. for everything and this is Wolfgang Charlie Mozart. And, That's quite uh, the name. Yeah for sure you know had to mix it up a bit but Charlie is the middle name R.I.P. Charlie little dog that got uh, taken out by a car a few uh, not too long ago five days ago. Yeah. And uh, so yeah a little memory of Charlie and uh, it's the middle name. So Wolfgang and I are gonna have a good time in Moab. So we just got the thing all final torque down Final set, we can press the foam between the frame. Yeah. You know, so now everything is really tightened up. The clearances along the pipe here are really nice and clean. It's a super well fitting. Yeah. Super fitting. Look at that clearance. It's just perfect. It's perfect. And, Solid. And so it's just it's unreal. It's good. Emperor Racing. Killer product. That's what I say. Look at those clearances. Wow. Killer product. That would be tough to make. Outstanding, actually. Back down here, so you actually have backing that what are you talking reinforces about? for this this piece here that comes down oh. and reinforces to here on the frame off the frame. Yeah, it gives it that extra strength at the bottom. And I mean, even that's that's all been drilled out, you know, all slotted, notched, you know. So they've taken as much weight away as they possibly can while keeping all the strength. And like I said, everything's smoothed out. There's no there's no sharp edges. There's no burrs. You know, I mean, you can literally just run your bare hands right along the edge of the metal on the aluminum and not worry about getting cut. So what, since we last filmed, guys, I actually hadn't tightened it down when we did that whole talk about it. And so it actually sucked it up like eight millimeters as the bolt sunk in here. And then I did these ones too, and then the back. So that's the difference now. We finally sucked it up and compressed it into the foam. 
made a big difference. It's perfect. All right. Thanks for the update, Q Man. Yeah. Yeah, all torqued down. Torque and tight until it doesn't move. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Look at that. Man. We need to like test it. Where's that piece of wood? <laughs> we'll test it. Don't worry about the that. The two by two. Rock on rock. Slick rock. That'll be the first test. Like Petrified sand dunes. Technically, we're riding what used to be the bottom of the ocean. Oh, yeah, that's cool right. What was that? I'm looking forward to it. Lots of future riding, guys. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. This, I'm more excited about this machine than like when I bought my two new BMW race bikes. Well, it's a whole new era for you. Yeah, a fun era. Yeah. Different. Less work. Well, still working a lot. Just on this kind of videos, but it's fun. And the next... For ergonomics, guys, you can see at 1.9 hours, I'm actually, you can adjust the handlebars on these KTMs. It's hard to see, but it's, it's actually offset back slightly. Yeah, you can spin those around and change the offset to forward a little bit. Yeah, so I'm... You can see it pretty good from here. You can see the offset. Yeah, so I just got to get this big bolt on the bottom and loosen that offset and just spin take the handlebar around. off and spin it around. And the next maintenance thing is to bleed. These are the bleeders for the air on the top of the forks. Now this is obviously a full air fork, so we're also gonna, I'm gonna measure to see if the correct air pressure is still in there. I had it at nine bars, so we'll see if it's still at nine bars. And then you're supposed to bleed these after every ride because air starts to pack in there. It's like instead of having oil at the top, they just have a little bit of air chamber, I guess, on these dirt bikes. So will that affect it as we go up and over on our long trip from Kelowna to Moab with the huge elevation changes that we're going to be doing? Well, I could bleed them when we arrive and see yeah, see what it's like in transport. You mean? Uh -huh. See if transport. And then yeah, I could. I'll check the air pressure and like you know, sit in, for Moab, I'll probably put in like eight point seven bars. Yeah. Um, soften it up a little bit because it's more about trials, not about jumping. And then these tires are probably going to be removed. I'm going to test the tubeless system, guys. So and then for the rear. Um, lots of options. Probably going to put the 505 cheater on. And the front, lots of options. I've been thinking about the bump up. 59, M59. But it's hard to get. That's an old tire. So the other option, put the Starcross Medium, which I have on the RMZ and worked really well. Hose, air vent hose at the top here. And the vent hose at the top. Okay, so much technology. Now, what is going on with taking out that end? Okay. Man, that is really easy. Later. Yeah, so full aluminum billet. It's a nice looking piece. And then he, uh, nice welds again. It's got the matched uh, drilling and the slots and. It's a nice looking piece. Pretty light because it's just billet aluminum and then he welded on the side strength. It's going to have a complete front strength. So essentially I removed the front fender to, to access it, but essentially it's going to be up here with the front, right? Nice and clean. Good thing you're doing this before you get the bike really dirty. Yeah, exactly. Well, Moab is going to be pretty clean. Should be, unless it rains. Oh man, and then the sand and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, I should probably do this like Take the tank and the front fender every time I wash the bike, if I had time. That's when you have that pro mechanic doing everything for you. You're going to have to hire that team. Yes. Yes. Soon. Soon, buddy. <laughs>